go what is going on everybody cover one crew what is going on chris chow's back again for another riveting episode for a beautiful contest on thursday night football we got the washington commanders the commies going up against the chicago bears and i, I use the term loosely when i say riveting because this could be a stinker beyond measure but you know what it's football you guys will be craving for this game come the off season around march and april i'm telling y'all so be appreciative of the games that we do got because you know what? You never know. It could turn out to be something decent on the field, even though Thursday Night Football typically doesn't give us that. But what do you say? We're doing a little start sit, man, today, and we got to go through all these players for your lineups. So let's uh, let's get to it. So jumping right into those Washington Commanders, they've been slumping. They've been looking horrific. Carson Wentz has proven that he's got less clutch than uh, Kirk Cousins, and that's a, that's a feat in itself. I'm telling you, man, I never thought I'd say those words. But Carson Wentz and these uh, Washington Commanders have not looked great over the last few games. They've been stumbling. They've been turning the ball over. 345 offensive plays, uh, 1835 in total yards. Running the ball decently well, 115 for 445 and two rushing touchdowns. Now we got a little conversation to be had here. Who's going to be the lead dog in this backfield? We know. The coaching staff handpicked Brian Robinson. They like his services. They like his game a lot. This is pushing a guy like Antonio Gibson back to the punt team and the special teams. If you can believe that, I don't know why they dislike this man. They just don't utilize him enough. He's been very good this season as well, but now he's kind of getting pushed back to see what Brian Robinson is. Kudos to Brian Robinson coming back after being shot how many times and, and leading the backfield in carries last week. You got to love that, man. Carson Wentz, you know, overall statistically, has not been bad outside of turning the football over 1,263 yards, 10 touchdown passes. That is not terrible for, uh, you know, entering week six of the season with a new team, offensive scheme, etc. It's those six interceptions that is crippling this Washington Commanders team and your fantasy clubs, even though you're likely got uh, Carson Wentz off the waiver wire for those streaming quarterbacks that you guys love. Field goals only two for two, minus seven in the turnover ratio. Not good. And last week, dropping that contest late. Uh, Carson Wentz threw that interception on the goal line. They lost 21 to 17 versus those Tennessee Titans. So we know there's some injuries to deal with with the commanders right now. They got no Jahan Dotson again with the hamstring. They lost Logan Thomas this week. So the replacements, once again, Diane. Brown who found his way to good grace in the end zone and we got John Bates gonna be the replacement for uh, Logan Thomas that's why I kind of got potentially JD McKissick on the field for the commanders team as we sit for Thursday night football so let's dive in a little start sit as per usual Carson Wentz has been good enough 99 points so far on the season he hasn't been great the clutch just kills you, and you know that's always a problem in fantasy football when you lose those points late. But 20 points is not out of the question for Carson Wentz in this contest as well. I got him as a low-risk play for all you streaming quarterback players out there. He is a start for me versus the Chicago Bears defense that is beatable, that has leaky holes, and will give up plays in this pass game. No kidding about that. Brian Robinson gets a mid-level risk for me. And so does Antonio Gibson. It's who we going to play, who we going to trust. Based on the volume last week, you got to say, fine, it was like 9-7 to seven in touches between the two of them. Who are we going to trust this week? It's going to potentially end up being game flow determined between these two running backs. I, If I'm a betting man, I don't like either option this week, even though... The Bears are pretty good at, uh, you know, covering the running back position and, and stifling them and stopping them from fantasy productivity. If I had to pick one, let's let's just throw a flyer on Brian Robinson. You got to think they want to see what he could do with more touches and more workload. Antonio Gibson, we'll see. I mean, he's just losing favor every single week with his coaching staff. Like I said, even though he did generate 51.3 points for you guys in Washington, I don't know what's your problem, man. J.D. McKissick, 36 points so far this season and there is PPR upside, but he is a high risk until they figure out who they want to utilize in this backfield. Is it Robinson? Is it Gibson? Who is it? Who shall it be? McKissick does have PPR upside still, but it is on the diminishing scale right now. I'm not starting him this week, even without the services of Jahan Dotson and Logan Thomas, because Diami Brown filled in quite nicely in that respect. So when we talk about Diami Brown as well, TD upside is here. If you're hurting for a wide receiver and you require one this week, I don't hate it, man. He's going to see lesser coverage again this week. That's why he was running free last week. Nobody's, you know, pegging.
begging him to do much on the field, and he catapulted himself in the end zone a couple times. So you got to love that. 24 points starting this past week. You can't hate what Diami Brown did on the field, man. Okay, Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin. Here's the problem. We have an issue here with Terry McLaurin because he has not done great for us this season. How can you trust it? Because the Chicago Bears are one of the worst teams defending the pass, and we know this offense at least throws the ball in abundance. Low risk for Terry McLaurin this week. This has to be his breakout week. You got to feel it. Week six, we haven't seen a 20-point contest from Terry yet. Scary Terry, we got to see it this week. And I think, uh, you know, Carson Wentz are going to do an admirable job in trying to feed him the ball. Give a mid-level risk for uh, Curtis Samuel. Now, again, no uh, Jahan Dotson. Maybe he gets sprinkled into the contest a little bit more in the PPR game. He can do a little bit of the yak yardage, get you the points that way. So both these individuals, I will fire up this week. Terry and Curtis, definitely firing up. If you're in a deep league that needs a wide receiver, yeah, okay, we're firing up Diami Brown. John Bates, I'm not going to trust this week, even though there is potential for him to find the end zone. It's too risky, too rich for my blood. I will not do it whatsoever. So ever the Chicago Bears will talk about these guys. They're not doing very well either, man. At this point, we thought at least they'd figure out something outside of the run game. They have not. The run game has been the bread and butter of this offense. The pass game continues to struggle under Justin Fields and this porous offensive line. We know Justin Fields. David Montgomery did come back from that injury. Looked good coming back. Didn't have any setbacks. Was running the ball very well. And the volume did come to, at the uh, expense of a Khalil Herbert. This is not good news for all y'all that picked up Herbert off the waivers on big fab dollars. But this week, we could see a little bit of an even touch. But David Montgomery back on the field that showed they are going to give him the first workload, first set of volume touches in this offense where Herbert will still get some sprinkles of volume coming back his way. 266 offensive plays for these Bears, 1466 in yardage. Like I said, the running game is the bread and butter. 160 for 787 and five rushing touchdowns. They will continue to hammer you on the ground. Washington better be ready to, uh, you know, at least defend this. And, you know, you would think at this point with how good this run game has been going, the Chicago Bears would be able to figure out the play action pass already. They have not, and, Car and uh, Justin Fields continues to miss his wide receivers. It's just not a good look overall. Darnell Moon He's still not looking great, and I mean, you can't help it with this guy. He's seeing top-end coverage, double teams with no supportive pieces. Pass game only doing 583 yards, three passing touchdowns, and four picks. Come on, Justin Fields, we got to see a little bit more. Trust what's going on out there. I get it, man. Nobody's really getting open for you. It's a big bag of crappy tricks, man, for the Chicago Bears right now. St. Brown, I mean, he is what he is. He's the secondary piece, but there's not enough passing usage to go around in this offense. The caveat we do have is Vilas Jones and Cole Komet. Cole Komet is doing what? Nothing still, but Vilas Jones is starting to make waves a little bit. 11 for 11 in field goals, so at least if you have the Chicago Bears kicker, you know you're at least getting points that way. Surprisingly enough, they got a zero turnover ratio, so they are protecting the ball enough and generating turnovers on the defensive side to keep that at an even kill. You can't hate that whatsoever. They competed versus those Minnesota Vikings last week, but you knew as the game wore on, it was Minnesota giving up the ball more than anything than the Chicago Bears actually trying to win that game so we talk and start sit for these bears Ah, oh, Justin Fields. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to promote you more than I can, even though against a defense that is pretty leaky in Washington, I'm giving you mid-level risk. I'm Even for streaming guys, it's very hard for me to say you can start at Justin Fields at this point. He still must reside on the waiver wire or the bench, but if you are in deep leagues, I completely understand shooting for the fences and trying to start him to get some point productivity. Just don't hold your breath on getting anything above uh, you know, 15, 16 points because that's likely the ceiling this week as well. David Montgomery gets a low risk play while Khalil Herbert gets a mid-level risk and this is only de determined based on volume and because uh, David Montgomery is back on the field he likely will see the lion's share of touches in this backfield this week once again while Khalil Herbert will you know spell him from time to time get his series in from time to time and get you decent points so the higher upside does go to David Montgomery this week where the potential TD upside could go to Khalil Herbert if they get closer to that goal line so we shall see it's a difficult uh, situation now once again, you'd like to see one running back be on this team, but we got to wait till next year before that happens. And Khalil Herbert likely is that guy. Darnell Mooney does get a mid-level risk play for me this.
this week because this Washington Commanders defense is, you know, uh, gashable. We can see plays go and make a, make decent uh, uh, splash plays from the wide receiver position. Darnell Mooney, though, has been underwhelming along with this pass game. He just can't seem to get open, and when he is open, Justin Fields just can't hit him in the open field. A mid-level risk because he is starting to get a little bit more traction in this offense, so if you have him, I'm still benching Darnell Mooney. I want to hit him on my bench before you could trust his services. Again, deeper leagues that can't fault you for starting them, but I would caution it 110%. St. Brown gets a high risk for me this week. Not digging it, not liking it because he can't even support his number one target. He's not going to be supporting his number two target. Vilas Jones, like I said, does get the gadget player upside of the week because he is going to be utilized that way. They're trying to figure out ways to, you know, be creative in Chicago. And Vilas Jones, this is why they drafted him. You know, the lesser Debo Samuel type of role where he could take those jet sweeps, take those short passes from the front of the backfield and try to run it into the end zone like we saw last week. There will be sub packages installed for this man specifically for Vilas Jones. So it is still too early to trust starting him as well. Definitely keep him on the bench, but it is something you got to watch because Vilas Jones could start turning into that gadget type player, kind of like the Cordero Patterson of old in Chicago. Maybe Vilas Willis Jones takes that play. High risk again for Cole Komet. I am not trusting you, sir, because literally this pass game cannot support anything outside of Darnell Mooney, and he's not even doing that. So you can move right along, like I said, man. For this game prediction for Thursday night football, we got... We got the line. It's what? Zero, man. It's a pick em spread between these two teams that have been struggling. The Washington Commanders desperately require this victory, and I think they will get it in this contest. Yes, they're on the on the road, if I'm not mistaken, but it is going to be something of a either extremely high scoring affair or it's going to be a defensive turnover filled battle like that there's no in between with these two teams you're either going to get tons of turnovers and terrible play or you're going to see them air it out and score some points on this board nevertheless I think the commanders are going to have to do something on this field to show that they are better than what they have been I did not like Ron Rivera calling out Carson Wentz this past week this has a lot to do with coaching sir and you cannot push the puck to your quarterback I do not like that whatsoever so maybe I'm banking on the fact that Carson Wentz is going to be a little pissed off and he's going to want to prove it to his coach to say hey it's not me I'm not necessarily the full problem it is a total team problem that we're dealing with I'm going with the commanders man 24 to 16 they need a get right game like nobody's business and I think they get it here. I think that Chicago will again try to compete. The defensive secondary, the young players they do have in Chicago does look very good and sharp, but I got to go with the commanders in a get-right game in a big way because they got far too many weapons, and this should be Scary Terry McLaurin Day. Mark it down right now. So there you have it. That is Thursday night football between the Commies and the Bears. Could be a stink fest. I mean, what, can, what else can we say? It could be an absolute stinker. Well, let's hope for some good fantasy productivity because at least some of us got some Washington players we got to start this week, likely. So, I mean, let's hope for the best and, and look for a decent showing. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your thoughts. Any start, qu start sit questions for Thursday night, throw them in those comments. I'll get back to you. But we'll see you next time. I am out.